Let's get to our next question, which comes from Alicia Sergeyev, who's there with uh, little Grace, is it? <laughs> yes, Grace. <laughs> um, so my question is in regard to the concept of hybrid working. Um, what legislation exists to ensure that those who are hybrid working are not exploited because they have the tools at home and are connected to their workplaces outside of their contracted work hours? Yeah, because uh, what Alicia was talking about uh, resonates with some figures that were released this week from the Australia Institute's Centre for Future Work that, on average, um, people are working, what is it, 6.1 hours of unpaid work a week. That's risen. Um, what do you think about this? Some countries like Portugal and France are now putting bans on uh, employers contacting their workers after office hours. They can be fined if they do so. Do we need to go that far here? You'd remember, David, as journalists, when the pager first entered our universe yes. and then the mobile phone and the assumption was in our work, and it's obviously an assumption in many in many workplaces, certainly in the public sector. Certainly teachers would have had this assumption once you were contactable at all hours, uh, people were on your back. And the other thing is you felt, especially in the early transition phase through this sort of always on yeah. uh, work model, you felt obliged, <laughs> A, to pick up the phone, B, to volunteer something. So I'm not surprised that we've added the equivalent of a half day, working an extra half day for no reason, for no pay. Australia's in a, again, we're in a very, very strange position culturally because we've, we're still in the middle of this great deregulation experiment. We're about 30 years worth now of, of trusting employers and employees to sort things out for themselves. We've deunionised the workforce. Um, we've sort of suppressed the wages of ordinary workers. We've suppressed the wages and the headcount of the public sector. So there's really no signal out there like there used to be in the past. You know, you don't have a golf with them doing an equal pay um, uh, submission to the to the old industrial relations commission to try and uh, break the gender gap in in terms of pay in the public sector. You don't have one of those you know very organised like the metals workers leading doing test cases on on a forty hour week or doing test cases on an extra couple of days annual leave. So so this negotiation unfortunately is corporation to individual, mm. organisation to individual. And the only leverage in, uh, individuals have at the moment is the collective burnout for the last 18 months. And the fact that the borders have been closed also for the last 18 months, we can't fill jobs that Australians can't do. And there are jobs that Australians could do that many Australians don't want to do because the terms and conditions in which they've been set, because their recent memory of life leading up to lockdown was, they're going to ask me yeah. to work an extra day. I'm probably going to go into an environment where they'll probably let somebody else go and I'll be picking up their... It's, again... It's yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I go just, for it. No, I just wanted to jump in. I thought that, um, you know, I think we've been talking about we don't actually know what's going to happen in Australia, and I think that's, that's very true. But what we do know is that the themes that are coming out of the US, the key th reasons that people are reporting that they're resigning is the search for greater meaning, which we've kind of talked about, worsening work-life balance and actually toxic workplace cultures. And I think if we think about worsening uh, work-life balance, which I'm sure many of us have experienced, that this is really a gendered issue as well. And if you think about the industries that we've seen the great resignation from, it's education, it's healthcare, it's aged care, um, and it's hospitality, which are female-led, often um, insecure workforces, often from communities have historically been marginalised and they're not only sort of experiencing this increased burden of work and stressful work but also often picking up the unpaid um, care burden at home inc including homeschooling. So I think it's not surprising that we're sort of seeing this burnout but this burnout is also about structural inequality and I want us to kind of come back and sort of well, remember yeah, that it's, a very it's good not point. about just individuals, there's some systemic things that we need to change. We are going to come to that too and how this has been... Yeah, uh...